In the second episode of season 8, some of our heroes share stories around the warmth of a fire, their final solace before the fight against the army of the dead begins. At Tyrion's request, Pod sings a song, what might be the final song they ever hear before dying in battle. High in the halls of the kings who are gone, Jenny would dance with her ghosts. The song is called Jenny's Song, a shorter version of which appears in the books, but more lines were added to the song for the show. Now, since I don't have Pod's pipes, wink wink, I'll spare you having to hear me sing and just recite the words instead. High in the halls of the kings who are gone, Jenny would dance with her ghosts. The ones she had lost and the ones she had found and the ones who had loved her the most. The ones who'd been gone for so very long she couldn't remember their names. They spun her around on the damp cold stone, spun away her sorrow and pain, and she never wanted to leave. In the books, Jenny's song is the favourite song of the ghost of High Heart, a ghost who haunts the hills of High Heart in the Riverlands. The ghost of High Heart has visions of the future and demands the song be sung as payment for those who wish to hear her prophecies. The song is about Jenny from Old Stones, the wife of Duncan Targaryen. In the books, Prince Duncan Targaryen, heir to the Iron Throne, falls in love with Jenny from Old Stones and gives up his right to the throne in order to marry her. By the way, Jenny had a friend, a woods witch she used to bring to court. On one of her visits, the Woods Witch gives a prophecy that the prince that was promised, the hero who would destroy the White Walkers and end the Long Night, will come from the line of Prince Ares and his sister wife Riala, who consequently are Danny's parents and John's grandparents. In a tragic turn of events, Jenny loses her love, Prince Duncan, to the Great Fire of Summerhall, a fire that kills both Duncan Targaryen and his father, King Aegon V. So, what does the song mean? In the sorrowful song, the kings who are gone are the Targaryens who died in the tragedy at Summerhall, including Jenny's late husband, who in death are now the ghosts that she dances with. So, what's the song's significance in the show? There are a few ways we can look at this. In the books, the song is normally demanded by the ghost of High Heart as payment in exchange for one of her prophecies. And since Game of Thrones is a story full of foreshadowing and layers of meaning, the song may hint at what's to come. So if the song is a prophecy, what does it prophesy? Let's go through four possible predictions. 1. Jenny is Danny and John is her lost love. Just like his ancestor Duncan Targaryen, John, the true heir to the Iron Throne, gives up the throne because of his love for Danny, and just like his ancestor, John dies tragically, maybe in a fire, maybe even dragon fire. He is buried in the crypts of Winterfell with all his Stark relatives, and his stone statue is erected besides his mother's statue amongst the other damp, cold stones. This may even be the song we hear when Danny visits Jon's grave one last time before leaving to take the Iron Throne. 2. Jenny is Jon Although it may seem like Danny is so focused on the Iron Throne that she would never give it up, there's already evidence in the show that she might. In the prophecy she sees in the House of the Undying, Danny walks into the partially destroyed throne room, which unusually is covered in snow. She approaches the throne, nearly touching it, but is distracted by the sounds of a baby crying in the distance. She walks away from the throne to follow the sound. She walks through the gates of the wall to its northern side into a snowstorm where she finds a tent with Khal Drogo and Rago, the child she lost. She speaks to Drogo, asking if she's dead and now in the afterlife. This scene has always seemed symbolic, maybe foreshadowing that just when the Iron Throne is in her grasp, Danny will abandon her pursuit of it and venture north to fight the Night King instead. She may then die in battle, finally reuniting with Drogo and Rago, the ghosts of the kings who are gone. Alternatively, the snow in the throne room may represent Jon Snow. In her vision in the book, she finds her brother Rhaegar and a mysterious woman nursing a baby. Rhaegar states that the child is named Aegon Targaryen and he is the prince that was promised. In season 7, we discover that Jon is the son of Rhaegar and Lyanna and his name is Aegon Targaryen. So Danny may relinquish the throne to the true heir, Jon Snow. In both interpretations, Danny never sits on the throne. And if another prophecy is to be believed, that the prince that was promised must sacrifice his lover in order to defeat the White Walkers, this suggests that Jon might have to sacrifice Danny in order to defeat the Night King, leaving Jon to mourn his dead lover like Jenny of Old Stones mourns Duncan Targaryen. 3. Maybe Jenny is Sansa, mourning the death of her brother, or Theon, a potential love, who, like Duncan, relinquished his right to the sea stone throne of the Ironborn, and after dying in a battle against the Night King, is now buried in the crypts as an honorary Stark. 4. The final interpretation is maybe the most haunting. Jenny may be Arya, Arya who loses Gendry in the coming battle, the closest thing she has to romantic love. 
The Hall of Kings who are gone represent the crypts of Winterfell. The ones she had lost, her mother, father and brothers, and the ones she had found, Sir Gregor Clegane and Sir Brienne of Tarth, and the other heroes she met along the way. And the ones who had loved her the most, another reference to her family, who, like ghosts, have returned from the dead. The ones who had been gone for so very long may refer to the Starks buried in the crypts. Since the crypts are old, thousands of years old if legend is to be believed, and full of dead Starks. But this line has a lot more significance when it comes to Arya. Arya has a list of names, a kill list. Cersei, Walder Frey, Meryn Trant, Tywin Lannister, the Red Woman. Beric Dondarrion, Thoros of Mere. This list was referenced when she was talking to the Hound in this episode. I'm sorry we parted the way we did. Was he on your list? For a little while. She recalled those names every night and now those forgotten people she's killed may come back as members of the Army of the Dead. And the dance isn't a mournful remembrance but instead a fight, or a water dance. The Bravosi style of fighting Arya first learned from Sirio Pharrell and later the Faceless Men. So this song may actually foreshadow Arya's fight in the Crypts of Winterfell, which may result in a small injury from falling and hitting her head on a statue, maybe causing this wound we see on her forehead in the trailers here. Or tragically, the song may reference Arya's death in the crypts. Like Sam says, death is forgetting, and with death, Arya forgets her sorrow and pain and never leaves the crypts again. Death has been a prominent theme in Arya's story. Arya knows better than anyone, Valor or Gallus, all men must die. Like Sam says, if we forget where we've been and what we've done, we're not men anymore. And once you forget who you are, you truly become no one. Bonus prediction. In a scene that echoes the sparring scene of season 7, Arya will fight Brienne who is now fighting for the army of the dead. To save her, the Hound will intervene, finally having his rematch with the Knight. But because we're all still expecting Clegane Bowl, the Hound will win this time. And if this prediction comes true, it gives a lot more significance to this line. When was the last time you fought for anyone but yourself? I fought for you, didn't I? Alright, thanks for watching. If you like the video, then smash the like button. And if you want more videos like this, then subscribe. This is Hungry Ghost from Night Owl Cinema. Good night, and don't let the ice spiders bite.